Yes, oh, hey, girl, hey. Oh, shit. Sorry, I, just, I just got what Shanti's nerves, like literally two seconds ago. So forgive us. Well, I'm very excited to hear your voice. Who are you? And you didn't even hear that Fran, she, she stood in for you and said, hey. Fran, hey, because you always say, hey, girl, hey. Oh, she said, hey, friend, hey. Uh Shout out to you, friend, for keeping it consistent. Lord knows. I'm back. Had a trip. I'm excited to tell you guys about it when I can. I can't do it now, but it was a great experience. I spent some time in Atlanta. Atlanta. And um, I do not want to be in Philly anymore. And I am going to start planning how to leave. Where I'm going to go, it may not be Atlanta. I think I have some more exploring to do. But I came back to Philly and walked down into Center City with my daughter, just walking around. And I was like, what is this wasteland? Where am I? Terrible. Well, that's Center City is a wasteland. That's Th- no, not true. Center City, which is supposed to be the heart. And the culture of Philadelphia was just like Gotham City, which is interesting, though. I feel like with Philly, a lot of the um, the way it's working, though, is all of the little neighborhoods are people are not going to Center City for culture or life or to do things are actually going to the little neighborhoods like North Liberties or Fishtown, where like Elemento and all these places are people are gravitating there and they are being built up and they're becoming a vibe but they still ain't hitting the same either i'm ready to go which is scary because i would have to be for the first time in my life fully by myself um with in motherhood with jojo but i know the listeners have done it and i'm excited to hear you guys say girl you can do it and she's older now, so she needs me a little less. She can explore the city too. But I'm feeling like giving myself till she graduates and starts high school. Two years. And I'm a plan to leave. I'm getting out of here. And you don't know where you're going. No, and that's the fun part. We'll find out. But I got some exploring to do. But I like I like I like Atlanta. I do. I like being around a lot of black people. I love it. I love it. I love it. It's a lot of black people. It's a lot. Atlanta come back with a full lace front, and I can't wait. Whole new shot to. I never. I don't think that's that'll ever be me. I might get a BBL. I might get a little injections. (laughs) Come back with some big breasts. Shout out to people in Atlanta. We apologize. (laughs) We don't mean it. Just back with easy. a grill at least. Lots at of least scammers in Atlanta. That's the that is the state of scamming. I'll tell you that much. The state. Hmm. Well, what would you call it? The city of scammers. <laughs> Maybe Georgia, not in the whole, but uh but I want to see Savannah. Mm-hmm. I would love to see have you ever been to Savannah, Georgia? No. I met a lot of dope people from Chicago. I would like to see sh- Chicago. I'd like to see Houston. These are the I these cannot are... see you in Chicago in the winter. I can't see you. Oh, it's not. A, it's not. Girl, that type of cold. You think it's cold in Philly? You it's think it's cold warming, in New baby? York? No. Ain't that cold no more, girl. Right, I, I need y'all to understand that global warming doesn't just mean it's getting hot. It also means it's getting colder as well. <laughs> In many places, and that the the weather is becoming more erratic. And everybody's just, like, "Oh, it's warm. It's global warming." No, y'all are. That's not quite the definition. But I heard you. I'm t- I just can't see. I can see you in Chicago in the summer. I can imagine. I've never even been. I can imagine Chicago in the summer because I liked Chicago in the winter. It was just awful. It was so cold, like bitter cold, where I would cry. You know how my eyes water. As soon as I walked outside, I, it was just my whole face was flooded with tears because of that cold hit you. And there's water like in so many surrounding areas, that wind. It was just like, Jesse, Juicy Smollett, you lying because it ain't no way you came out here for a sandwich in this cold. <laughs> Juicy. Maybe, maybe Houston then. I don't know. But that's Chicago. 
You Houston, really want to move Texas. your daughter to a place? Wait, wait. Can you hear me? You want to move your daughter to a red state as she's coming into her womanhood that's going to just infringe on all her rights? You have to think about that, too. Like I don't want her. Philly is a blue. I, votes blue Philly, over here, but I do not want her coming of age Philly's either. Philly's not blue. Philly's like purple, but there's well, got to be a twin. better place. There's I don't like be the a... way you're distract, detracting from no, what I, I want to explore. I hear you, but that's I what I'm going to do. Think about I'm that. not going to California. I'm not going. The West Coast is out for me. I don't have any interest in the West Coast. Okay. New York, what? I don't think. New York is exciting, but I don't see myself living there energetically. It's too much for me at this time just make sure you're you're paying attention to the laws maybe it's connecticut i don't know connecticut i don't just threw something out there that's kind of close maybe it it is maybe it's hudson new york maybe it's new york no that's that is racist no hudson that's for all the black people all the farming black folks are up in new york a lot of people are moving to hudson and relocating Shout out to teach me something to them folks there. I don't know, but Philly, <clears throat> maybe it's New Jersey, girl. <laughs> I don't know. And don't all know. this talk, and then you end up in New Jersey, I'll be like, oh, it could be New Jersey. I would hate with it. That would be terrible. I would you never. You just gotta get her out the hood. Right? That's it. And Philly is that. Anyway, we're six minutes in. Um. When Shanti isn't on the podcast, she doesn't listen to the podcast, and it hurts. And I just want y'all to know that she didn't hear nothing we said about her. She didn't hear any of her accolades. She she doesn't know what we talked about. So even if I reference it, y'all talked about and aging, hurts. and you no, talked that about wasn't all we talked about. Talked about exploring your innermost purpose and talents to not snuff it out. To First be in all, alignment you, with the creator. You watching the clips is not enough. I know it's what y'all talk about. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about a lot more than that. And you got a lot of love on those episodes. I, and it, I felt it. That's the way energy works. It's no. <laughs> that it, you don't have to hear it to uh, not feel it. So y'all keep moving. Same for the haters, too. I felt that, too. What haters? Not it. That's very Atlanta of you. What haters? Oh my fucking haters! haters. haters. I know <laughs> y'all out here hating on me. Fuck Who y'all. The fuck <laughs> ass for haters. I hate. That's my biggest pet peeve when I hear people like, yeah. And if you ain't got haters, then you ain't doing. It's like, what? Why do you want haters? And who is like obsessed with haters? Fuck out of here. Also, if anybody has haters on this podcast, <laughs> it ain't you. <laughs> you got up. You. Woo. I'm just a. You know what it is. You either really like me or you really don't. And I'm okay with that. I really am. It's like, okay. I don't know anybody that say they really don't like you. They may have comments. I I could text you a couple people right now who hate my guy. Who hate you? Yeah, I'm going to text you. Because this just came up the other day and it was so funny. I ran into somebody. Who the fuck hate you, girl? Hate me, yo. I'm texting you right now. One moment. Fuck them. Because they still still talking about it. They, they still, still listening. Talking about it. Check your phone, though. This phone is Remember getting. Remember when we talked about haters, and then I went and did this. Yeah, they... All right. Um, oh, see? child. The way you... the... the way I would cackle in her face, <laughs> girl. Anyway, I have to be honest. I'm having a lot of feelings over here, and I don't know what they are quite yet. But I'm definitely feeling them, and I'm coming off of a very rough work week. But struggling emotionally, probably can't hear it in my voice because I'm I'm determined to allow this to be a moment and not a narrative. Okay. But, but so I've been getting up. Yesterday I got up early, took a 7 a.m. yoga class, hot yoga class. The day before that, I want to shout out this business because I tried to shout it out with Fran and Jade, but then we started cackling about something else. Fringe Pilates here um, in Flatbush. It's a black woman, black woman, queer, it's a black queer woman owned space. All the intersections. Let's motherfucking yes. go. 
And it's a lovely class. They offer class. It's a reformer. It's Pilates reformer and they offer mats and they offer private sessions. So if y'all are in Flatbush, make sure you check them out. I've gone to their classes a bunch of times and I'm enjoying them. And Pilates on the reformer hits different. Especially, it can either be a really easy class or it can be incredibly difficult. Um, I, of course, like to be like trembling on the Pilates reformer so that I can, I really, I like to feel weak and I like to ache and be sore so that I know mm. I'm doing something and sweat. The other more restorative classes, I'm like, boo, fuck my inner peace. So I'm really enjoying it. And I want to shout them out, but I'm going to continue to get up early. Getting up early, I think, has been helping. I'm um, trying to train myself because I have to go back into the office after Labor Day. Oh, which I'm It's happening, of, y'all. It's really even, happening. I can't even. Send I'm Antoinette not love. Say, if I'll be honest, but no, whatever. we're going to all send you. You, you may. I'm going to hope that you actually like this switch up and that that it revitalizes something and helps with routine and I don't and I don't know. I work till twelve AM the night before last. So I don't know how that's gonna work. And I had a meeting with my boss again saying, Y'all want us to go back into the office. One, I'm not doing this from home anymore, but two, like well, I'm leaving. Uh, maybe I'm it helps leaving. with your boundaries. I'm closing my computer. Yeah. I don't know what to tell you. <clears throat> I'm not opening it again. This eyeshadow is everything really this gold shimmer shine is like and i threw this is that on radiant is this iconic that you just put on your lids no it's fenty it is the fenty highlighter i use their highlight as eyeshadow but the other th i got a new contour thing because i don't like like i like the stick but that's for when i need to really like contour my shit sometimes I just want a softer look you know where I can just just tap it on and just get some bronze on my face girl I can't wait to show you this formula it is a thing where you take your brush it's a cream formula but you put it on you tap 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 it on and it goes on so easily and then it it stays as powder it's like a it it it's you not gotta show it to me I, I'll bring it I'll bring it home I'll bring it home Listen, um, I'm about to see y'all could today. see this if you were subscribed to our Patreon. You could see her shimmering, <laughs> shiny. You could see the lighting is nice today because we're recording during the day for the first time. You could be having a whole experience with us if you were subscribed to our Patreon, which is an experience in which you can see and hear the podcast as well as exclusive content offered to you when we have the ability and capacity and we do our best to offer that to the people. So consider becoming a patron on our Patreon. What is the, um, how do they do that, Antoinette? What's the website that they will go to? Go to www.patreon.com backslash around the way curls. It's very very simple. www.patreon.com backslash around the way curls. If yeah. you can't afford that, we understand. But we have more to ask of you if you have the capacity. You can rate or subscribe to the podcast, which also helps our visibility um, and helps validate us to folks that may want to work with us. I want to shout out whoever wrote this beautiful review of the podcast. This person says, the intro to the podcast transitions into different topics, level of vulnerability from both ladies, the humor, the strong desire to discover the profound and the profane within pop culture, politics, and within their own personal life is the only way I can describe why I love this podcast. Hmm. I said, girl, a person. <laughs> Yeah, Not, right. uh, you want to see this on our this is actually what we're going to pitch to people now you just wrote it's our on pitch, the media so. kit i already <laughs> took it you know that right it's Did amazing it? what yeah. a thoughtful and succinct and like thank you for seeing us and saying those things because I, I i think that's what we're trying to do so shout out to you another way you can connect to us is via discord there's a whole thread of people that are really kind. They say good morning to each other. They share really them. 
really beautiful things. It's like a really beautiful space. Um, Discord is like a group chat, if you will, where you guys could come in and talk around the way curls or your own personal shit. I just want to acknowledge a couple people. Holy Horus has shared something. Shout out to the God, the King, the one and only. Um, shared something about what he's experiencing in his relationship. And I just mm-hmm. wanted to tell you to go where the love is always. And we're making our needs very clear through communication. And we are always offering grace. But you don't need to be in conflict with yourself for nobody. Mm-hmm. Let that person show up for you the way you know you deserve. So shout out to you, to our girl, Char- mm, how you say that? Charmaine Zanning. Mm-mm-mm. I think I that's it. it. I think you got it. She recently quit her job. So shout out to I you. I saw that. Finding the courage to do that. We wish you a soft landing and piles of money and security. And then Miss Simon, um, who recently is experiencing an incredible loss, life-changing loss. I just want to let you know I think of you often, and I'm sending you lots of love and hugs. And, um, yeah, think of you. Thanks for sharing. And, girl, hold on. One foot in front of the other. So, yeah, you can be a part of the Discord as well. It's in the link to our description. That's part of the community. Stay locked in. It's also in the link tree on um, IG. Oh, it is. All right, now. Some people say, though, that they have problems with that link. I have set that link numerous times to I know, work I know for perpetuity, and I just don't know why it's not. So if you do have problems, just send us a DM or an email or something, and we'll send you the link. Because it's Discord. I think they're have, they're, there's something funky over there. Where like the link expires every week or something, but you can set it so it doesn't, but it's still doing that. Anyway. Um, And then we have a new, we, last month we were able to have our town hall slash, we can't find a word for that yet, but our live kind of interactive experience with our patrons on Patreon will be this September 25th. um, At 7.30. At 7.30. So make sure you're signed up so we can chit chat. And hopefully we'll have, we will, we'll have some structure, some theme or something to uh, ground the conversation in. And y'all really showed up. And page, new patrons, shout out to y'all. I don't know. Somebody must have, I don't know. They went up to, to God. see Fran. That's Jay. what it was. I'm just excited. <laughs> but uh, new patrons, new account, same old C. Andrea, Bao, Amanda, Janelle, Jessica, Kylie, Victoria, Nikki, mm, N3KI, Nikki, Aaron, JK, Rose, Sam, Ian, and Shanice. Y'all all real ones. Thank you for that little wave of And just support. so y'all know, your, pa- your patronage has helped Shanti get a new computer, child. Listen. <laughs> we sound like an NPR. You ever listen to NPR when they're yes. trying to? <laughs> just so like, you know. And uh, wait, what your donations go to? What your subscriptions go to? <laughs> listen, our girl, it got so bad. Shanti, people on Patreon was like, "Yeah, Shanti needs a new computer." That fan was like, I said, "That computer is about to die." And look up with a new Let computer. Me upgrade Her computer you. screen bigger upgrade than mine you. now. I hit her up like, did you get the one I have? She said, oh, my got mine a little bigger, actually. I said, bitch, did anybody tell you to do that? The customer service nice. at um, Apple, you know? They're she great. different when somebody likes They're customer not. service. Yeah, Uh-oh. it's just different. Just so much can happen when you show up fully for something that you like. So, <sighs> Well, moving right along, what time is it? Yep, yeah, we're good. Hot shit. I already shouted out Fringe Pilates. So that's done. But I do want to shout out just one song. How you say this word, this S word, Shanti? Sicily? S- is that Sicily? It absolutely is. <laughs> Wait, Which, what was you going to say? Out. Just out of curiosity. Out. I want no. to <laughs> know. <laughs> <laughs> you want to know why? Wait, sis. <laughs> what were you going to yeah, call that? Yeah, Sicily. That's crazy. What were you going to say, eyes, though? No, seriously. I want to know. Just, I'm legit dyslexic. Why didn't that look like Sicily this morning? 
What were you it going to call me? I can't. I can't. I can't tell you. Sickly? What? No, no, I wasn't going to say that. I was going to ask you to say Silent. that. Silent. Anyway, that is disheartening. I'm really It's okay. Right it Can happens to the best of us. Oh. We're in a digital space now. We're no longer computing as no, literate. I, that didn't look right beans. to me. That didn't look like Sicily. All right, well, moving right along. Fuck it. If you like to get high, I have the playlist <laughs> for you. Okay. This song, Sicily Box. It's, there's, it's weird because there's apostrophe at the end with no S. But it's Sicily apostrophe box. I need y'all to stop what you're doing right now. Pause us and go on whatever streaming service you have. I don't know these people. It's a whole bunch of interesting names on here. But this song is so fire. And last night I was cleaning my house. And I had eaten a little bit of an edible. And this song came on and it transformed something in my body. Ooh. Like the, the molecules, the atoms, they they changed. Something shifted and it just went weighted blanket. Everything's going to be fine. Wait, wait. So it's a playlist by this I then curated well, by Sicily Box? No. So Sicily Box is the name of the song. The artist is like 15 different artists on there. I'm not reading all that. But I then went to Spotify and said, oh, Spotify, make me a playlist based off of this song. Okay. I'll tell you. Shout out to Spotify. Isn't it? I, I love her. They don't pay their people as much as the others. And a, it, somebody needs to tell me, I will leave Spotify if somebody tells me that on title, you can create these kind of playlists just from one song, just by the click of a button. Yes, make me a playlist based off of this. Because Spotify goes hard with their It knows you. It's your soulmate. Yeah. It, it knows really you. is. This <laughs> station, and I don't know if I can make it public. If y'all just go to Henry Internet on Spotify, you should be able to see it. But if you can't, baby, just make your own. It is so good. I was in here last night. It was, I was on the stars. I was in the moon. I was just feeling. The stars, the moon, the, moon, the mountains, the mountains and the river. I was I eight was, years I old loving really that good. song. I was feeling really good. So anybody that likes to get high, ride around. I'm a matter of fact. I'm going to drive down to Philly today listening to this, but I'm not going to I love this for you. Internet, but I'm going to just cruise. Antoinette, I'm going to see you. I'm excited to green. see you. Aww. I know, same. I can't wait. Go celebrate Mr. Don's birthday. Did you get the Ooh. gift card? No. I'll get, I can get it for us after this. <clears throat> I have a card. Um, Shout out, speaking of more music, shout out to Cleo Soul. Hopefully, I mean, a week ago she said she was coming out with a new album and I don't see it. So I may resent her and be upset, but <laughs> no, I'm, I'm like, still excited. <laughs> I'm excited for her to come out with a new album. And I didn't know that her producer, and he's produced, I think, majority of Although I think it's collaborative, but I think he's had a lot of influence over all of the Salt albums in Flow. And they're just this cute little spiritual couple. Mm -hmm. Listen, if, it, if there's a cult leader family that I would follow, it would be Cleo Soul in this man because <laughs> I love them. And her baby's big as hell now and she has a new album. And I want her to come to the U.S. to tour so she badly. said she was going to. She has she teased to. that. She did those two shows in London that I tried to get tickets. I was gonna fly out to go see it. And it looked mm -hmm. transformative. Did you it see did. her in the audience when she was singing? Mm -hmm. No, that you are that, that I I want her to come here, do a tour, but I'm she's all about she's like you. She's all about no, I don't it's it's about how I feel in my body. It's crazy. I don't know. Not good in the head. It's so she, annoying. She ain't like, hungry. Come on. She ain't try to eat. You got right. a baby get to a, take care of, bitch. Come right. on, grind hard. Fuck your get feelings. A, be a in part your of body. this machine. The <laughs> fuck are you time you want? Let's go, Cleo. Bring God your ass. Damn. Anyway. I'm not going to go into this as much. I, I was very ex affected by this, but now I'm looking at it. I'm like, hey. <clears throat> If you guys, I know we have a lot of new male listeners and I'm definitely um, generalizing and being uh -oh. a little bit problematic, but we got a lot of niggas that 
love hip hop. I feel like they've called and like talked about hip hop a lot. Um, Brother Mar. But you, yeah, you need to check out this article on Defector by Jason England. It called it's called Fifty Years Later. Oh, excuse me. <clears throat> it's called Fifty Years Later. Is there anything left? And it's just his critique of hip hop turning fifty. And he just says flat out, right, like, we're not going to talk about how hip hop has lost its fucking mind and its fucking way. And it's a beautiful article. And he's spitting bars. Um, he says here, basically, he's just saying that, you know, capitalism has ripped the heart and the soul. And hip hop has sold out. And it has become a clusterfuck of um, hyper capitalist as well as um, what is the word uh, veering towards like conservative or all like really really um, what's the word counterculture type of like ideation as well right. like it's just a mess and that's I guess that's for like the old heads like. Ice Cube, all those niggas that, you know, are kind of lost their way, Jay-Z in some way. So I think he's referencing them in terms of the politics uh, or how politics is represented in hip hop. And then just the newer generation is just completely lost. What's it but on? It, it's on Defector. It's uh, a podcast? Just, no, no, it's a, it's just like a, a, a digital magazine, I guess, or publication. Oh, you um, got to read it. You got to read it. <laughs> But Jason <laughs> England, he has a lot of... I've, I looked up his it. other articles. It's really good. Um, but here's something he says. Something like, anything that exists long enough in America to have a legitimate history becomes subject to this. The goal of our hyper-capitalist society is to flatten, standardize, and refashion anything counterculture into something that serves its bottom line. It could be MLK, Pat Tillman, or Che Guevara. Depth and accuracy matter less than the saleable aesthetic. The actual spirit of any movement matters less than whether you can tailor it to satisfy and in some cases manufacture a sense of nostalgia. Um, so, yeah, just I've, I haven't really thought about hip hop. I guess what we've had. How many years have we been in relationship with hip hop? 20 years, I guess we would say. Yeah, maybe like 10 20, 26 years is my relationship with hip hop. <clears throat> but um, it makes me think of Yaba's quote, if you don't understand white supremacy, then everything will confuse you. And I think that's very similar to like capitalism. If you don't understand capitalism, then everything's going to confuse you. And I don't, I don't see how hip hop would be um, not affected by capitalism being sold out. But child, it's a great read. You guys should take it and let's read it. And I wonder what people's uh, thoughts are. But that's it. We can hit a break. Okay. Thank you for that. You want to sing? After these messages, we'll be right back. Ooh. Hold on, my computer is in charge. What is up? <laughs> Joe, can you give me some water, please? I'm drinking coffee and it's making me shake. Oh, that is cute, girl. Yes. You got a little sneakers or something with that? What you gonna wear? Your Birkenstocks? She can't hear me. See? <clears throat> no, I hope not. I get a new charger. Oh, I need to test myself. Test yourself what? For COVID before I go to this party. Why? Just because I wasn't feeling well when I came back. Uh, I, f I feel fine, but I do have congestion in my throat. I don't want to go there and get yeah. anybody sick. You have a test? I got it's multiple. Not expired? I got a, oh, that's a good point. I'll check, but I have a bajillion. Okay. All right. 
Ready? Sorry, it's it's charging now. Glad I saw that. This. All right. Start start with yours, not mine, because I got to get my cuts together. <clears throat> so we're back. Politics as usual. Wow, blow. More financial transactions have come up concerning Clarence Thomas and his relationship with the conservative billionaire Harlan Crow. Hmm. Um, all of this is coming up as folks try to hold him accountable. Um, and a lot of the court just thank you, court justices accountable to this financial disclosure agreements. What is this law called? Yeah, federal financial disclosure laws that apparently he is um, disobeying. But basically, those laws are to account for any income, gifts, reimbursements, interest in property, liabilities. It's basically just like an account of your finances. Mm -hmm. And Thomas was like, oh, yeah, I did forget a couple things here. He basically was flewed out by Crow, Crow multiple times. Um, apparently he had paid for $133,000 for three homes in Georgia, one of which includes Thomas's mother. That's where she lives. Um, he didn't pay for it. Right. Crow paid Thomas. Crow paid for, for that. Uh, Thomas also failed to account for a bank account that had less than $70,000 in it. And then a insurance policy for his wife worth a hundred thousand dollars which is like what that's palpable that's nothing that's strange but anyway <clears throat> my point is it's what's not just, wrong? go ahead what what's what's i can understand i see that there's all of this stuff that he's not accounting for right i get that it's going against this these disclosure laws but like what y'all gonna do what are you what's the consequence of this you just are there repercussions? We're just naming all of these things. That's obvious that there is discrepancies there. And what? What y'all going to do? He just got a sugar daddy. Crow's taking care of him. What's... Okay. So no. I understand so, it's a conflict of interest, but all right, what y'all going to do about it? Nothing. No, I don't think that's the case. So even this new law that he's... Um, there's a new ethics law... Um, basically saying that there's new requirements for federal j judges and Supreme Court justices to have to make this, these disclosures. And it's more specific about what needs to be included in the disclosures. That's the only reason why we're getting this information. And that's come to be because Pro um, ProRepublica, which is a news source, unearthed all of these donations and not donations, excuse me, that's not the right word, all of these gifts. And a lot of people see them as bribes. Um, so I want to be really clear that Justice Thomas has accepted gifts from not just any old person. This is a Republican mega donor. And it's hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars worth of gifts. It's private jets. It's an RV that's over a million dollars that was financed. It's free, lavish vacations where not only... Is he, you know, is the flight paid for, the room and board is paid for, like his his lot, like everything. It's a free trip. Um, the house for his mother, nep his tuition, his nephew's tuition. Like, and this is only what we know. This is only what was unearthed. So there's more to come. And what we have to understand is what Justice Thomas is now disclosing, disclosing is only this year. So he's been on the Supreme Court, what, the last 20, I don't know, I want to say 20 years. And hello. So you can only imagine how much more he's been gifted. So I think it's really important to talk about this because there's a lot of conversation around the ethics of justices. And there's a lot, 90% of Americans want an ethics committee to oversee the Supreme Court justice now. You never see 90% of Americans agreeing on one thing ever. So this is something where like the actual belief system, like us believing that the Supreme Court has morality um, it's, it's waning. It's, it's, we don't believe it. We don't trust them anymore. And so the Supreme court 
has to get that back in order for this country. Like it's a branch of government. If that branch of government falls, then fuck. And we need it. We need it. And here's <laughs> and here's here's the other deal. The big deal about this. One is that he didn't disclose it. One is that he hid it. One is that he's been hiding it for years. There's a reason why he never talked about that. And and it's it's got to be like there's there's no other rationale besides the fact that he knows that it's a conflict of interest because he's taking all he's not taking money, but he's taking tons of gifts that equate to money and lifestyle and experience. He's taking this stuff from a mega donor. That means that most likely he'll be doing that donor's bidding. And a lot in in a very unusual move, the justice when he uh, completed his yearly disclosure report this year, released a statement from his lawyer and from him um, defending his travel with the billionaire and who and he said that any earlier forms he inadvertently omitted the information and he's positioned himself as a victim so like because he's unpopular right now because he, he needs to travel out of the country he needs to go on these trips and and he's someone who always says he's down to earth he doesn't like lavish stuff like this is not the narrative that he has um the narrative that he has told us. This is not his narrative. So the fact that he's been doing this is insane. Also, the fact that he's been doing it still this year, even while he's been under this kind of investigation, is insane. It shows how untouchable Supreme Court justices really are. And that's why Congress is working to have these... Kind of, they're, they've been asking for the justices to disclose this stuff, and they won't do it. So now the people are like, okay, you need to appoint a committee. Also, the ethics around it, I don't know, like, obviously, this guy's got you in his pocket and you're going to do his bidding. And then you, your wife is also very much linked to the January 6th riot and I'm insurrection. Sure January 6th riot. She said. <laughs> no, I'm si what? That's a real thing. Like, she's was texting Mark Meadows and, like, some of the Proud Boys people and was, like, in on it. I um it just feels like it's very because these are gifts. It just feels like yes, it's a, it's an obvious it feels obvious. It feels like it's um showing how easily bought and influenced um these justices and I'm I'm I am I lay my life down that he's not the first nigga to do this. No, there are many Alito instances also, of doing this. Justice but, Alito is also under it's it, also under scrutiny for gifts that he's taken. It feels like it's scrutiny, but how are you going to prove? How are you going to? It's a gift. Like, how can you? The, the, to actually hold this up in court feels like it's. There is no court. Hot air. I, I don't think that you understand. There, he's not under any investigation. <clears throat> well, in to even of court. like to no, they even can, okay, we see a list of this stuff being disclosed. Everybody's showing like, wow, this nigga's really getting bought out. He got this, he got this, he got this. But what's the actual consequence? I just All said, we're seeing is just like... Can, there is no, there's not going to be a consequence for oh, him well, because he's a justice. But right. there can be guard... No, just wait. There can be guardrails <clears throat> put in place saying the way, same way federal judges have this in place where you cannot accept and these types of gifts, you cannot accept things uh, over this amount of money. There's absolutely guardrails like that in place for federal judges, just to be very clear. It's the Supreme Court that doesn't have it. But federal judges, many that, of them, I was watching them talk about like, They're not allowed to <clears throat> take it. They can't well, like, take an all expense paid trip by anyone. There are federal judges that were on CNN saying they cannot imagine taking these kinds of gifts. It is completely against ethics. And they're even oh. skeptical of people buying them lunch. They they can't do it. Their lifestyle is com completely different. These gifts are amounting to millions of dollars. They're yeah. buying homes for family members. Right. They're, but they're also, I don't know, it, that feels very slippery because then you are you are comparing lifestyles and capacity and people can't like he's a billionaire that's nothing to him 
Like will you go out to eat with your friends or something They're like, girl, I'll take care of it. It doesn't matter to me. I'll fly you on my jet. Say less. Yeah. You can go to my family's house. Like I get it. I understand, but it's also, this is, that's a billionaire. It's, it's but nothing to him. He's like, it. I'm not trying to buy him out. I'm just it's trying to like, just, that's what I do. It's, not it's just my friends. Old billionaire. It's a mega Republican. I, I understand. It has very specific ideologies that Clarence Thomas ups holds on the court. Which could that be is, just a friendship. That's like, that's my homie. Birds of a feather flock what? together. If that's my friend. I want to look court, out for him. If you are a Supreme Court justice, you cannot take those kinds of gifts. The <laughs> same way, if you are a lawyer and you're representing some someone, you can, there's certain people that you cannot talk to. There's certain rooms you cannot be in. There's certain information you cannot disclose. It's, it just is what it is. And you can say it's a slippery slope. You could say it's whatever, but we need a fucking ethics committee. Absolutely. Sure. I, it's, I agree. I just and don't know simple, how and they're going are, to hold it up. I don't know how they'll, I don't know how that can actually be. Um, it doesn't mean they shouldn't try. It's to say like, if, if we found out that, that Joe, that Joe Biden is in on, was in on the Hunter Biden shit and was completely in business with Ukraine and getting money. And now that's why he's giving Ukraine all of this funding. Are you fucking kidding? It would be, it's the same shit. You can't fucking do that. You well, can't do it. And I, I, and I also hear a lot of misconceptions that we have to make very clear that people are like, well, politicians do this all the time. Corporate America's in their pocket. Yes, but here's the difference. They, they, and they're both equally as bad. There's a lot of conversations around trying to get corporate dollars out of campaigns. The the money that goes into, suppose, like, this is the law, okay? I'm not saying this is what happens, but if you're caught taking campaign money and using it for your own personal shit, that is against the law. And you can be brought up on charges. Right. What is funny? Because you just, I love how, I, of course, yes, there is the law and these niggas are like, fuck your laws. I'm above it. This happens all the time. We but want, just, so this is just, why I, this is why even I in our own you, just relationships, all, but this is where I get confused with you. Just because it happens all the time, we should just, doesn't like, oh, make it, it right. all the but wait, let me ask you Just because it happens all the time. We should say, oh, it happens all the time. Ha, politics as usual. Let's keep it pushing. Or are we going to actually call it out and try to do something about it? If you, if, if, if that is possible, but these people, you it feels like they're making the law. And then this if it's is not possible, possible, but what's the, con like, what is the actual consequence? All right, we're going to create an ethics board. And who's, the, who's in the ethics board to review this? this? The same niggas that are probably. To figure Shazi, I just, it just feels like. You talk about the of everything. We I don't I know do, yet. but I this is don't, all brand new concepting. This is I all brand do, new concept. I just think that politics is built. The, the real work often does happen behind the scenes. It's at the meetings. It's at dinner parties. It's at these. It 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 just feels like you're asking the the same niggas that are responsible for this kind of behavior and do this type kind of behavior to review it and to hold them responsible. It's like, okay, I don't sure. know who's going to be on the ethics committee or how that's going to work. No, mm -hmm. I don't think that it should just be a whole bunch of DC politicians on that committee. I don't know how it, was, it will work, but all I know is we need more information and we need the information disclosed. We also need Supreme court justice Supreme Court justices term limits. We also need to vote Supreme Court justices in, not just Congress members who then appoint them for a lifetime fucking appointment. But what I I, I understand that all of that is fucked up, but I also understand that not, none of it's going to change if we just sit back and say, well, th it's just going to be another cycle. Like what? How the fuck do you make any progress if you don't progress at all? It might not be overnight, but it has to be step by step you're dismantling this nonsense. And this is a part of it. This article from ProRepublica spawned all of this, all of this conversation around, whoa, we need an ethics committee for the Supreme Court. Whoa, we might need term limits. Whoa, we might need... And so we have to demand that. We have to be asking that of our representatives. We have to be saying that needs to be on the ballot this year. 
It's not just the powers that be in this room. We're a part of it. And then, yes, there's, of course, there's plenty of things that happen within rooms and dinners. Yes, of course, that's a part. It's the same way when we go to dinner and have a fucking meeting and we have bill it to the business. Part of that comes, part of that will finance money. But to just go on a lavish trip with your fucking wife from a, that's completely financed from a mega Republican donor so that that it appears that you can do his bidding, his very conservative Christian bidding is a problem. And if we don't call it out, if we don't try to find solutions, then we're going to be stuck with the same problem. We can either try to find a solution or we can just keep saying politics as usual and we can just stop talking about it because it's the definition like we're just being insane to just keep speaking about it if we're not looking for anything actionable at the end of the day it's like i don't know what people want no this is not the complete solve but what do you want do you want do you want progress then give us a fucking idea i think i think i don't want to be gaslit into thinking that oh this has just happened this is crazy this, Nobody's this, saying that. No, I, th- I think it is. It's like, what? Not him doing it. What in the hell? We got to well, like. Not. They're literally talking about Justice Alito. They're literally. Justice I think Alito just the is conversation the same- around it. When pe- and when people say like, and I don't really want to talk about it much more. But when people say, when people do roll their eyes or do shrug their shoulders, like what's new? Like, I'm not surprised. I'm People aren't enraged because we're not surprised of course that's what's happening of course i guess i would say to that it's not not anything to be like yeah oh we're gonna get an ethics committee we're gonna we're gonna keep stay with this like bureaucracy of all right well let's do that i feel like that that feels like the solution or the thing to um I guess an inch towards progress and change. I don't know. I don't yeah, know. I would say if you're not enraged or if you're just like on some, oh, I'm not surprised this is what it is, that's, then that's what that's gonna be what it is. Absolutely. Okay. That's what I, it will I, always that's, continue to be. That's that is how I feel like of course. Well, that, that, of course that's what they're doing. Of course these niggas aren't following the books. Of course there's lots of backhand. What's the, of what's, course there's what's the thought after that? <clears throat> after the of course, then what? Cause I feel the same way. Duh. I feel like of there should be more. I, I feel like it should be. Um, I think people should f- figure out what the consequence of that is and how that is happening all across the board. I, with it being with Clarence Thomas in particular as well, it kind of. Um, becomes this Republican. Uh, error and discrepancy and dishonesty and narrative around how around Republicans versus this is how our whole our global national politics works. It's all a we're acting like we're following these laws and that we are um, set up with defined boundaries and care when everybody is doing backhanded shit and you are gaslighting the people and making us feel appeased or looking for us to like i don't know go go do this due process of voting of finding the right people of demanding shit where you're doing whatever the fuck you want whenever the fuck you want with whoever the fuck you want but we're going to follow the due process when y'all don't do that's not how you move so you're making us feel crazy or you're making us feel like oh appeased when you don't, that's not how politics works 99% of the time. Can I ask you how many conver- how many how many conversations with news pundits or news channels have you listened to covering this Clarence Thomas conversation? I don't watch that. Okay. And I don't I don't so know that that's unfair, my source is let where, like let me finish. <laughs> that is my point in that is that that is a part of the conversation, but you're not You're not coming to the conversation. They are talking about what does this mean for politics as a whole? They are branching out and talking about corporate dollars in campaigns. They are branching out and talking about what could have been happening this entire time. How is money impacting politics? How is these the top 
percent <clears throat> impacting this. These are conversations that are they've happening, been they're conversations but, that happen for years. Like this isn't new. This just okay. doesn't feel new. It doesn't okay. feel like it's just we're not gonna a new thing. Because it's just like I, I, don't I don't feel like I have are. to go on the news and absorb all this stuff and hear CNN and I hear. I do think you have to say that if you're going to sit here and talk <clears throat> about the conversation and how no one's talking about X. I do think you have I didn't to say no know one was talking saying. about. That's not what I just said. I said you're making people feel crazy or feel like they're because because I'm not shocked and I'm not alarmed by this because for me that's how politics works. I don't trust that it's a bureaucratic we're following systems we are following these Neither processes. Do I. So for for me to feel that I'm for me to feel like progress is happening or to feel like oh this is um this I'm glad they're creating an ethics team. I don't feel relief from that. I don't feel like that's progress because that's not how they move. It feels like another another um, asterisk. It feels like another fucking uh, document created that you actually don't follow. That's not how y'all move, period. So yes, it makes, we, we can talk about it. We can, we can say, you know, corp so many times, and I don't have all of the um, facts and figures, but this discussion of corporations, this discussion of politics and money and how that money often corrupts the black and white or the so-called um, checks and balances that we hope our government follows, that is a, that is a constant conversation. It's not anything new to me in any way. So like, even so with all of these- liberation, <clears throat> So is police reform. So is all of this stuff, a constant conversation. Does that mean we stop talking about it and, and marching towards some kind no, of- No, but I'm not gonna like, look towards the government, the same motherfuckers doing it to like check and balance it. It feels like something it's a else. governmental agency. So what is it? Then come up with another solution. I don't- It is literally- Burn it down. Court Just justice. throw a bomb on it. I don't That's know. What I'm it, it doesn't work. I, and, it and doesn't- asking you about the, the and how many <laughs> programs you've watched on this Clarence Thomas thing was not to say that you don't have facts and figures. You have mentioned that that if it sounded like you were saying that the media was kind of gaslighting us into making this be like this Republican no, thing. No, the, the Only, government is not media. Like y'all actually thinking, all right, we're going to set up an wait, ethics me, <clears throat> oh to, to... Really fast. The, you, you mentioned Republican and how they're basically dissuading us to think, oh, this is a Republican thing. You said this and that basically that we're not looking at it as a whole, where we're really looking at politics and how money corrupts politics and, and politicians across the aisle. So that's what I'm saying is that those conversations are happening. And so part, they're not happening in the, in the little corners that maybe we're used to getting our news on. But if you go and you actively are a part of the conversation, you'll hear the different news outlets are talking about this, which I think is progress. It's a little more progress because they could have just been like, oh, this Republican leaning justice isn't shit. See how corrupt he is. But no, they're saying like, this shit got to be happening on the Democrat side as well. So there is an issue within money and politics. We all know that. And my thing is like, we can't stop. That's just where you and I are just different. It's just like, I'm just trying to figure out what the fuck is the solution? How can we figure this out? And it might be two pronged. I think there's multiple ways for us to solve this, but we have to find a solve. We have to. And, and honestly, you have three branches of governments for those checks and balances. And those branches of governance need fucking checks and balances. And honestly, we're the fucking checks and balances because we vote these motherfuckers in or not. So if we don't like what these people are doing, we need to get them out. But instead, we think that they just somehow appear and we have no say in it. That these big, bad white men, black, white men and, and white women and fucking rich politicians are just holding us by, their, by our necks. And no, they can't get their jobs without us. They can't. So it's like, 
I don't, I just, we that's where vote. I'm like, we what the vote. fuck? We just gotta vote. We gotta do more than vote. We gotta <laughs> know who our people are and demand shit of the, and demand stuff and come to the table saying, this is what we want. And if you don't do it, we're not, fuck you. Even with Joe, even with Joseph Biden, there's no fucking reason why these fucking, ma- why marijuana is still not declassified uh, down to a lower drug. There's he, That was a campaign promise. Now they're starting to talk about it again. But there's no reason why these fucking black men and black women are in fucking jail for selling fucking weed while white folks are rich off of it. These are the things that we need to be screaming at them. So no, do I, listen, I understand how frustrating this shit is. I understand how it feels like it's always the lesser of two evils because honestly it is at this point. In the pri- in the primaries, I vote my heart, okay? In the primaries, I vote for this is who I ideally want to see in the office. This week, th- during the week, I'm listening <clears throat> to Marianne Williamson. I'm listening to fucking what Cory Booker has to say, even though he's not running. I'm listening to... Cornell West, like you told me, Dr. Cornell West, I'm listening to all of these folks trying to understand what their ideologies are and trying to understand who, where I fit. Hakeem Jeffries, I'm trying to get to know him better because he's representing my district and I know somebody that works in his campaign. Like I need to understand who the fuck these people are because the way that they just stay in power is that we remain to believe that we are disempowered. That's all I'm saying on this. There needs to be some sort of committee overseeing the Supreme Court justice. They need to have term limits and there needs to be laws put in place against them accepting these kind of gifts across the aisle, period. That's how I feel. That'll stop it. Clarence Thomas. That'll stop it. Please, let's stop. I'm sure. People are like, we're done. That will stop it. Get the ethics committee. All right. Well, yeah, you are. damn. Okay. I just don't agree. I don't agree. Yeah. I'm sorry. And I'm we waste we didn't waste but a lot of time. You have no but... ideas on how to stop it. You offered <laughs> no no insight into I, I, besides I, burn it down, which is like well, okay. Then I don't what? know what else to say. I don't know. It has to be okay. something. It, it's not with this the same. Um, we we, we let's, I, I just don't agree. It. We could. I don't. Okay. I don't. Let's just move on. I don't. Okay. That's why this is a good podcast. Honestly. I guess. Yeah. I still love you. Now I'm Go ahead. coming back and win. <laughs> Got the fucking. Oh, gosh. Come on, because you want All right. Go ahead with your next. Um, your, what's your next one? No, we can skip that. We can skip. Maybe, we don't have we're, time. maybe we're done with politics. Yeah. <clears throat> on to yeah, pop culture. On. We have. This has been out. I don't know. It's been the second season has come out a while ago and I'm just getting back on it. You refused to watch the first one, but sex in the city is just like that. (laughs) I watched the second season started it and it's awful. It's just the most. (laughs) I don't know. Why Why is this exist? I don't understand it. Cash grab. It is. Just cringing. I'm cringing, rolling my eyes, uh, yelling at my computer the entire episode. But I will, I spent, but I'll definitely go to the next episode. I'm not turning it off. I refuse to turn it off. It's like a car crash. They got two black women on there that ain't got, came out of nowhere, child. They got, <coughs> it's just a, a woke, cringy mess. It's like uh, a, my, uh, it's like a, no, if not my mom, because she would never. But it's like if your mom decided to like. First of all, don't you compare my mother. <laughs> no, your mom. I curse your, you out. <laughs> your mother, your mother's um, has become far more like politicized, like radicalized in a lot of ways, and like woke is like she's understanding the things. She's Just a like problematic liberal, yeah, where she don't fully understand wrote this, it, but yeah, wrote it and put these characters like. Antoinette, oh you... no, the stuff my, my mom says behind closed doors, she could never write a script. Like, what did you just <laughs> It's terrible. It's terrible, but I I love the characters so much. No. I mm-hmm. love I love them, 
I love that they're older women as well. That finally really hit me. Um, that like, damn, these women, we've watched Carrie grow old. We've watched, she's been this aspiration. I've always loved Carrie. I've always watched Ooh, her. Who aspires to be Carrie? Her style. She's I'm terrible. talking about her oh, okay. style, their way of being okay. there. Of course, Sex in the City has always been like, this is ridiculous. Are you fucking kidding me? Like, who has time and the money? And I mean, I guess maybe some people live in like that. But it's always been like otherworldly to me. But she's always been a bad bitch in a lot of ways in my eyes. I love Carrie. And to watch her like she has gray hair and wrinkles now. These women are 56 years old. I I love them. And they stay really true to um, their characters. So... Girl. It's like watching a car crash, but I can't stop watching it. And people are being really mean about them being older, too. Like, saying terrible stuff. Um, and this, Carrie, what's her name? Sarah Jessica Parker said, there's been so many misogynistic attacks on us that would never happen to men. Gray hair, gray hair, gray hair. Does she have gray hair? Why is this normal? Her, what did she said? My colleague Ari, Andy Cohen has thick gray hair and it's amazing. Why is this normal for him? I don't know what to say to people, especially on social media. Everyone there has something to say. She has too many wrinkles. She doesn't have enough wrinkles. It feels like people don't want us to be in harmony with ourselves. And it's that part mm-hmm. that was like, I, the way that she put worded that was so beautiful. It's so true. Society does not want women to be in harmony with themselves in so many fucking ways. And I was like, that must also be really scary for her in a lot of ways to to show up on air as an aging woman. So as much as it's a train wreck and I hate it and Carrie's still trash, I also can't stop watching it. And I love them. Don't all. try to find the thing, the one silver lining to make us want to watch this show. To I support feel like it because they're aging women. Listen. Everybody I know, this, though, is, has the same sentiment. Like, I fucking hate this. I can't wait for the next season. What's going to happen? I they're all it. locked into this that train wreck. my heart. <laughs> Not everybody you know, because I refuse. I don't... It's like if Game of Thrones came back that it did in its trash. It, it it's is. It's kind of heartbreak. The heart, but it's not as bad as what I hear this is. The heartbreak that I feel, because Sex in the City is a masterpiece. Sex in the City, not the first season, but that was a masterful show. Very problematic now that I've gone back and watched it. Very problematic themes in that show. And not just Terrible. relationship. Like lots of racial, very interesting choices there. Especially when Samantha was dating a black guy. Very oh, interesting. I forgot about that. Very interesting oh, choices God. that were made cringy. The black now. woman hated her too. Oh my God. But it's God. cringy in like what she was saying to him as well. And even Stanford, even him being like, he couldn't just be a gay man. He had to be, you know, this very stereotypical caricature of what a gay R. man R. can be. Anyway, he died. Who's Stanford? The gay friend. Yeah, girl, Not, died. Oh, gosh. Anyway, I just won't watch it. I won't watch it. I see that Aiden's back. That Aiden, stand up. Like, Aiden, what's wrong <laughs> with you, bro? Like, why do you keep going back to this hellish woman? Can, hellish. Let me just take a beat. Let me just take a beat real quick. Because I got to get off my soapbox. But Carrie was horrible to him. Aiden did nothing but love her, bought her fucking apartment, bought it, fixed it up, broke down the wall and made the apartment bigger for her. Like, what did she do? She cheated on him. Mm -hmm. Then she saw him in another relationship and went back and said, I miss us. I want to be with you. And he's like, what? You broke my fucking heart. Literally, he said, you broke my heart in the street. And then what happens? He goes right, running right back to her. And then she tells him, no, I can't, I can't not be friends with Mr. Big, the man that I cheated on you with. He's in my life. You can't ask me to choose. Then what happens? Big has a hard time and you invite Big 
to the getaway that you're having to your to Aiden's cottage? You invite the man that you cheated on your man with to your man's house. Have you lost your motherfucking mind? And while you were there, you were nothing but an asshole. You wore your little stupid heels. You didn't try to fit into his life she at all. was terrible. You didn't try I to know. see him. Never and accepted he him. he to your raggedy ass. And you don't like the ring. even wear the... No, she liked the ring. She liked the first ring. Miranda picked out a bad ring. He went back, remember, and got a right the right <laughs> ring. And she was like, oh, and that's what, that's what made you realize that you should be with him because he got you a better ring. Are you insane? Then you Girl. won't even wear it. You had the shit on your fucking neck. Listen, I've been waiting for an Aiden my whole life. And for that bitch to get one and then toss him away. And then you told me she says some shit about Big. She, I didn't did. like on she this says, episode. she turns to Miranda and says, maybe Big was a mistake. Oh, after my she God. Links up, after she links up with, after she writes Aiden again, she, she gets on his line again. Like, hey, old friend, sees him. And is falling in love with him again, and then turns to Miranda and starts being all reflective, like maybe she's Big the wasn't worst. Shit, she's oh my the God, worst. I made a mistake. Like literally, for you to speak ill on the dead, maybe Big wasn't it. Big, Big left, left her with a wad of money, of dollars. billions of dollars. She's eating off his dime, and all she ever listened. <clears throat> when Big finally got his shit together, Big was just. Big was that Mary. I don't care. Right, Big was Big was married with her. Like, all right, here we go. She was tripping out about the wedding. Could you imagine being Aiden? She didn't want to... She, putting on a wedding dress gave her hives. And then her fucking wedding is in like the New York Times with Big. She was having this big grandiose a mess. experience. She's, what's Carrie's Fuck sign? You. And what's you went Carrie's and cheated. Sign? You went for Gemini. for Natasha's tooth because you was cheating with Big. I can't. Carrie. Let's see what Carrie, Carrie Bradshaw. What is Carrie Bradshaw? Astrology. <laughs> Look that up. I bet she's a Gemini or an Aquarius. No, she Libra. Ha! No fucking way. <laughs> that makes no way. That, that does not make makes any sense. sense. Don't play yes, with me. Yes, it does. How does that make oh, sense? Oh my god, that is so funny. Oh wow, you only hate yourself as much <laughs> as I hate Carrie. Wow, that's the thing. Maybe I'm looking at myself. <laughs> whatever fuck Carrie long live big and and Aiden needs to stand up and I hear Miranda whatever she did with Steve a mess I'm very upset apparently she's not with Steve anymore I don't have oh time god and Steve is just as sweet as he wants to be still oh it makes that's me another so one I, I want a it. Steve that's I what Steve. I want I don't, I don't want, want a big I want a Steve especially since Steve looked like he was putting it down listen and he's okay. still built. His speech Whoa. impediment has got a little bit worse. Can't understand him so well, but that's okay. He's looking good. You can understand so, child. But he, child. anyway, you gotta watch it. Apparently, it got, he got a little lazy. But um, he got he's a, turned into a lazy lover. That's because yeah. he probably was tired from. He wasn't feeling being the, the warmth from her. Yeah, right. she gave him labor no in warmth. the relationship. Uh, oh, cold-hearted bitch. Miranda crazy. Oh, listen to us. <laughs> women hating women. That's podcast over here. Cold-hearted bitch. Yeah, you got lazy because you wasn't doing what you needed. No, she really is cold. Even with her kid. Uh, no, that's what he says. That's what he screams at her. You never wanted me. And you didn't want whatever the little redhead nigga name is either. I said, Ooh. Brady. Brady. And you didn't want Brady either. I said, whoa, mm. they get mm. Mm. What's Hit Charlotte? A cord. Charlotte is <laughs> herself. Charlotte is being used and abused by her children. Terrible oh, kids. Make God. creating monsters. Just nasty kids. Nasty. And whoever wrote that and thought that that's normal, I put my I would, oh. Little nasty kids. Same whatever. Multiple kids now? She got oh two. yeah, she got pregnant, right? She has one biological so. and one a mess. Adopted. Nasty. Letting her daughter do whatever she want to do. Child, whatever. If it ain't Samantha, I don't want it. I ride with Samantha. I haven't gotten to Samantha's cameo. Apparently, she has a cameo. I haven't gotten there yet, but uh, yeah, well, Samantha apparently said it doesn't give what mean it's... girls. I get it, but Samantha also she don't play that shit anyway. <clears throat> Try to watch it. Ain't nobody watching that bullshit. Sometimes you gotta just let are. things die. No. I the can't. last sex when I saw the movies, I knew. I said no. Mm-mm. 
I'm gonna just go ahead and flatten, commodified, capitalism it ruined it. Yes, it was cash grab. It always absolutely. Was. Those movies were not good. We should have just left with Big and Carrie in Paris, and Big. Yes, when he goes and gets her, and then she's on the phone. What was his name? They revealed his name at the very end. Something like Ronald or something. Wait, what? They revealed his name at the end because he tech he calls her because he has to move back to New York from whatever Napa Valley because he found her in Paris and they're going to be together. And he calls her at the very end of the episode and it says his name and she answers and it's his voice. And he's like, I'm a coming baby. And we're like, oh shit, that's Mr. Big's name. Oh, we right. never knew his first name. Oh, but right. I remember now. See, that's not, John. I, his name's John. Name. His name's John. John. Chatty, do you have your window open? Can you? Cl- it's really loud. Can you close your windows? I do. I'll close this down. Hold on. Sorry, Monty. Take this out. <clears throat> Is the other one open? Mm-hmm. All right. Is the other one open? It's like helicopters. The whole time it was loud or just that one moment? It, it, it's been loud. You got to close your windows when you record. You can't have your windows open, child. <clears throat> All right. <laughs> this next one. Go ahead. You got it, queen. We're back, my team. We don't have to do that one. Um, Miguel? Yeah. I thought that that? was interesting. What was the other one? Miguel recently had a performance. Miguel's gotten a a little comeback, so he's trying to come through with the come through. Whatever that TikTok uh, short thing got him a lot of attention. What TikTok short thing? This love is a short thing. Whatever. His old, old song. I don't know the song. I can't remember the song, but Angel Eyes. Angel no. Angel Eyes and another song came okay. back on TikTok that was one of his first releases. It got him lots of attention. So apparently he's, you know, coming out with a new album. I feel like Miguel nice. is an unsung hero. I really I've always enjoyed his albums. I've, I saw him perform. I think he's an incredible performer. Yep. I like him as an artist. I really do. But he has a new album coming out. And um, he did a little sneak preview to its release in which he suspended himself from hooks on his back. So you stretch the skin out uh. and you pierce it and then you hang from it. And it doesn't necessarily like leak blood immediately if you find a person that knows how to do it. Um, so he was suspended kind of like Superman style style or no just from his back not superman his legs weren't up but just his back maybe like six hooks singing a song i guess <laughs> if i was in that audience i'd be like yo i know he ain't singing me r&b looking like a piece of shank meat uh-uh. <laughs> but <clears throat> this is um an ancient practice it dates predates five thousand years ago Lots of religious, um, lots of indigenous and, and Indian people from India practice this as a as a way of like a penance or rites of passage. Of course, white people have co opted it um, and do it <laughs> do it just because, and they do it all types of different suspensions. So they do like from your arm pieces of your flesh. So like they take your arm, stretch that shit out your back, they'll Superman it. So it's your I'm back at and your legs. And a lot of people say that it's for stress relief. It helps them to overcome oh. fears. Some people even, you know, say they pe- reach a, a threshold to pleasure. And so that was Miguel's prompt is what is your relationship to pain? And, um, I, I thought about it a little bit and there's like two types of pain. Of course, there's like physical pain, which absolutely not. No, I, I don't get that kind of, I don't understand that. I don't, I would never do that. What but, the pain is pleasure, like BS, BDSM. I'm interested in that. I'll say that I'm interested in the 
the thin line between that because like sexually I kind of get that I don't get that kind of direct pain that you would want to give like suspending yourself from hooks or oh, okay I don't get that but I think I am have do have some interest in the in that other you know like cake sexual thing mm-hmm. I've seen them. okay thank you that's beautiful. Perfect. Close my door. Thank you. <clears throat> um, yeah. What do you, what is, do you avoid pain at all costs? Hmm. Do you see any, any value in pain? Apparently not with the people that I like and date. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently I'm a masochist. No, I, um, <sighs> I don't know. I, I I don't. I again with you sexually. There's certain things. Sure. Now, do I want to experience pain? Pain. Even sexually, no. Do I? I don't want to bleed. I don't want to like that. Watching him. Since I just looked at it again and watch it. It's making my whole body hurt, and I'm uncomfortable because no, I don't want to experience pain. Um, I don't glorify pain. And I, I'm not romanticizing pain. I don't want it in my life. I know that it happens and I can manage it, but I don't feel like I should inflict it upon myself in order to show myself that I can manage it and be less mm. fearful. Maybe mm. I should because mm. mm. I am full of fear. Who ah, knows? Interesting. But I'm still not. <laughs> like I'm not going to do that type of I shit. I know. I'm not going to do that. I don't even like, like I want another tattoo. And the thing that's stopping me is the pain. I'm like, mm. interesting. Mm. Like I'm just not. I'm not with the shits unless it's probably sexual. And even then, it's not really pain. It's more discomfort or like, you know, what is it called when you can't breathe a little bit? <laughs> Whatever that is, <laughs> so, asphyxiation. Like, thank a little you. loss of oxygen to the brain. Not <laughs> big. A little lightheaded something. But like, no, I just... What about spanking or slapping? Have you ever seen like a professional slapper? Yeah, I have. I mean, I'm... Yeah. I was I like, don't... oh, it's different yeah, than some see... knucklehead nigga. <laughs> like, what the... <laughs> well, I've seen it and I'm like, okay, I don't like... Like, I'm... People have slapped my ass and some people know how to do it right. Some people do it where it really does hurt and you're like, you gotta stop. Don't fucking play with me like that. But... <laughs> Not you're right. Not everybody knows how to do it in a way that's like exciting and like yeah, um, energizing, invigorating. It's like sometimes it's like you're you're beating my you, ass. you're beating me you you're beating my you're ass. Doing. You're weird because you're getting some pleasure from this. Fucking but thing. is that weird? Don't kink shame. Some people like to inflict pain, and some <laughs> people like pain inflicted on them. I also Ooh. think Miguel is coming out of a divorce with someone he's been with since high school. And I feel like he's probably in a lot of pain. They, they would reconcile. They would not reconcile. You know, it was a. It I was wanted them to a win. Topsy, me too. Yeah, I love it them. seemed like a very topsy turvy, very emotionally draining time in his life. And now he's putting out music that will most likely reflect that. Um, doing it, you little. Ooh. You know that they was doing some shit. I Let's know they was. I know they was bedroom, into but. stuff. I would have loved for them to come I out know, with, yeah. with a with a sex video sex tape that up? they consented yeah. to. <laughs> Not any leakage where they're, you know, they I uh, agree. Yeah, I we should make a list of couples we want to see <laughs> fucking. And couples we absolutely do violence. not. That's a Ooh, good can you write that? That's a good one. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> With some couples. We, mm. I definitely would love to see Miguel and her. I want to see um I think she's single. I want to see Tanya Henry. I feel like she probably got something. She probably got an only fan somewhere so do us up. But that's just a sexy lady. I don't know what's wrong with her. With her little lace by Tanya. So Tanya okay. Henry. shout out to her. This is her her stuff here. She ain't pay you for that. Don't do that. Um yeah, I don't I don't know. Do you think that you would I would never do anything like this, but I think there is it's I I think I'm open to exploring it. Mm. Exploring, exploring it. what? Exploring getting hung? That, or no, no, I'm 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 never going to do that ever. Okay. 
Tattoos okay. aren't bad for me, but I think it's I think there is a possibility for putting yourself I, I think it's a direct um embrace of fear or like it's a it's like an intentional meeting fear and then controlling it or overcoming it that I think is great with that hanging thing it can't I'd be rather jump out can't of a never. plane oh that's never like, never I ain't that's never that's like that's gonna do that in my life that's 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 like okay or jumping off of a cliff I've done stuff like that where I've I've done the what is it the when you're on the rope and you're really high up in the mountains and you're yeah on the line and you're mm-hmm. going from mountain to mountain and then you there was like this long rope that you had to hold and then you just dropped you just had to hold it to the net like I've done that where I'm terrified and I'm like wow I could do anything but I didn't feel pain no I don't want to feel well physical that's what pain. I think that's a next level of like facing fear confronting fear that's the word but why like, that's a next level like pain on yourself in order to to, to know that you can get you get to the other side of it, that actually it might be more mind over matter. That actually nine times out of ten, I'm and I feel like childbirth is that as well. It's like yo, how the fuck do you get like that? A that's a pain that you. That's a different kind of pain, but it, it I just like you said, it does open you up to another pos- capacity for yourself. But chi- I don't know if yes, I said that childbirth right. I can understand. <laughs> But you're not actively saying, I want to feel these childbirth. Like I know. Right now, Shanti, would you say, you know what? I feel but when that episode, when do it, do it scared, I guess. Right. When you were uh-huh. nervous. Yeah. What if you had the power to say, you know what? I'm scared in this moment. I need to overcome. Let me if God. Let me feel childbirth again so I know I can get through this. The Maybe. fuck? I don't really? know, but maybe I don't know. That's what I'm saying. I'm interested in exploring it and wow. the philosophy. I don't know if those articles really. Um, oh yeah, I, or, I, I didn't. I would. Philosophy. I would be curious if there's somebody, if any of you, and not not. I'm more interested in those that aren't doing it through the portal of sex because you will have pleasure on the other side. But yeah, I don't know. Interesting. I ain't discounting them or saying they're crazy, but uh, ciao. Um, wow. This is a, this is interesting. You know, Pinky Doll, right? No. Yes, yes. Gang, gang. The the girl that does this. You I have no idea her. what this is? Oh, this no. is not going to be a very fruitful conversation. Hmm. How do you not know that? Pinky Doll went viral for being so an NBC. <laughs> She's <Pinky> NBC <laughs> character in which... She would go on TikTok and she would go into this role playing in which she engages with, it's like a live streaming. People watch you and they send you money and virtual gifts for you to stay in a role of this non-controllable gaming character. That's the kink for some people. It's like they are enacting a gaming character and she does this, yes, yes, gang, gang, look, look, look. Like she does all these weird virtual gaming um characterizations and makes money and she's made thousands of dollars off of this she also apparently has lots of sex tape she's like does porn as well but look up pinky doll just look up pinky doll she apparently was using a filter so she was very very racially ambiguous in all of these viral videos and when she does her character she wears a blonde long lace front she's of latina descent i believe she has a thick accent i don't know where she's from um but she's racially ambiguous looking mixed race in a lot of ways she recently went to an award show and she stepped out four shades darker than this character she's this gorgeous chocolate brown and people have been responding to it it's it's just Created oh, all this it. discussion around it. Have you seen light skinned pinky doll versus brown skin? You see the difference? Yes, yeah, as soon as you Google her, that's exactly what comes up. So, a lot of people are responding to this and saying that she's a marketing genius for using the filter to her advantage. And she basically knows how fucked up the system is. So, she's going to play by the 
rules and, you know, play, rather the pay by the game and get more attention and get more people to engage with her because she's lighter skinned. Other people are saying she should be canceled and that upset that she's one, not really light skinned and that she's basically been like cosplaying being light skinned. Um, and the other group just being like, that's fucked up. Like she's doesn't love herself. Da 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 da. But I listened to through Dash, shout out to Dash, Dashira. I stumbled upon this other woman's um, YouTube video. Mayowa's World is her profile on YouTube and Instagram. <clears throat> she talks about colorism, texturism, and all the other isms. Um, and she discusses anti-Blackness. And she talked about this video. And she asked the question of, is, her, is Pinky Doll... <clears throat> by her doing this cos cosplay of being light-skinned, is she in fact just upholding this color colorism and the fact that you can get ahead more quickly and get more attention and be more accepted and approved if you're more light-skinned? Or is she um, just, you know... What? Can I'm I can't talk and read that. Do you want to just not do this and end this? We episode? only have forty minutes, so we should just end it with Miguel then. Yeah, that's I. I was trying to get your attention on that. Yeah, you only have forty minutes then. Okay. All so right. then, Monty, can you just end? So let's do an ending. So if you guys have any experience with um confronting fear through the the portal of pain i'm curious as to know what the rationale or what the philosophy or what the what you've even learned from that how it, how has it helped you to be more fearless or for some people relieve stress i don't know hit us up um that is our episode for today Happy to be back and catch you all on the flip side. Bye. Sorry, that's a good topic, but um, Monty, can you cut out the pinky dog?